So before I even get started, I've got to come clean about Dirty Sally. I've never seen this spinoff from Gunsmoke that lasted just 13 episodes during the winter of 1974. Apparently, another spinoff featuring Ken Curtis and a pre-Brady Bunch Susan Olsen had been contemplated years earlier, but that one didn't happen. So as the only spinoff from Gunsmoke, it feels like I really should have been more aware of this show, which it turns out was pretty darn good despite its relatively short stay on the CBS television lineup. Hi folks, my name is Dave Sundstrom, and I like to think of myself as something of a pop culture historian, especially when it comes to music, movies, and especially TV. Simply put, I love talking about this stuff. Here she is, Sally Fergus, better known as Dirty Sally, a crusty old junk collector who, on the show, joins forces with a young former outlaw by the name of Cyrus Pike. Sally was played by the classically trained Jeanette Nolan, and Pike was played by Dak Rambo. We're going to talk a lot more about him in just a couple of minutes. Lest you question whether or not this is a legitimate Gunsmoke spinoff, here's your visual proof. The final two episodes of the 16th season of Gunsmoke introduced both Sally and Cyrus Pike to TV audiences. Jeanette Nolan would play Sally again one more time during the 17th season. It is interesting that the show wasn't an immediate spinoff, it would be almost three years from Sally's first appearance until the premiere of her own show. Now again, I must offer up that I haven't ever seen an episode of Dirty Sally. I really wish I could. I have a hunch that I would enjoy it. But I do have a theory about why the show maybe wasn't as successful as Gunsmoke. And that has everything to do with the name of the show. Dirty Sally sounds like something you might watch when no one else is around. It certainly isn't a show that anyone could ever talk about around the water cooler at work. Yep, I think they really goofed when they decided to name the show after Jeanette Nolan's character. Speaking of Jeanette Nolan, she really was a beautiful lady. Here's a picture of her when she was young, and yes, I know you're going to say to yourself, well, that's when she was young. Look at her now. Time was really hard on her. Well, folks, here's another picture of her, and as you can see, that just isn't true. Jeanette looking the way that she did on Dirty Sally was truly a testament to two things, her acting ability as well as the show's makeup department. Like I said, the show didn't last long. At this point, the only place that one can see Dirty Sally is to catch her appearances on the Gunsmoke episodes that I previously mentioned. Typically with shows like this, you might be able to find an episode or two on YouTube, but that's just not the case with this show. While doing my research for this video, I found this article which says that Dirty Sally ended up being spun off from Gunsmoke because of the tremendous amount of viewer mail that the producers of Gunsmoke received asking for more. Apparently, they hadn't seen anything like it during Gunsmoke's entire run. Even two years after the original airing of those episodes, people were still writing in. So you might be wondering, if it was so heavily demanded, why was it canceled so quickly? Well, this is CBS we're talking about. But there is more. This article that I stumbled across really says it all. You see, for the first couple of episodes, the show performed well in the ratings, even though it was up against ratings juggernaut Sanford and Son. The article has Jeanette Nolan saying that someone had told her that they would have watched the show if Sally were in a different time slot. Well, I guess a lot of viewers felt that way because over time, the ratings continued to decline until the network lost faith in the show and canceled it. Now, I did say that I was going to talk some more about this guy, so here goes. Here's where I remember Dak Rambo best, Jack Ewing on the mega hit Dallas. But even before Dallas, Dak seemed to be guest starring on all of the most popular TV shows. Even though he didn't have his own weekly series for quite a while during the 70s, I knew who this guy was. And then Dallas came along and there were other shows as well, including a couple of stints on daytime television in the soap operas All My Children and Another World. However, the thing that I really remember Dak best for has nothing to do with his acting career. Instead, it was his willingness to bravely come forward as someone with AIDS during a time when people who were battling the disease were ostracized and treated as pariahs. Sadly, the giant quote in all caps that is spread across the bottom of both pages of this article 
turned out to be 100% incorrect, at least for Dak. The actor succumbed to the disease in March of 1994. After having been diagnosed, Dak retired from the business and spent the last few years of his life really coming to terms with what it meant to be his true authentic self. 53 years isn't a very long time to be in this world, but I do believe that as a whole, society is better off because of guys like Dak who faced their challenges head on, not without fear, but bravely nonetheless. In just a few seconds, you'll see a link to another video about John Wayne and the cast of Gunsmoke. What Duke did stunned that cast. Quite frankly, they couldn't believe their eyes. Want to know more? Hold tight and you'll see a thumbnail for that video in just a few seconds. However, in the meantime, I'd love to read your comments about Dirty Sally. Did you ever see the show? And if so, what did you think? Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you clicked on that little thumbs up icon. And what the heck? Why not subscribe to the channel? I talk about music, movies, and mostly television from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.